Hello, this is Bruce Ackley, Extension Program Specialist with The Ohio State University, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, identification of various pigweed species that are common and problematic here in Ohio. So the first thing we're going to do is separate it and to separate the species into two different groups, the ones with hair on the stems and leaves, which you can see in the left column, and the ones with no hair on the stems and leaves, which you can see in the right column. Um, we're going to talk about smooth and red root pigweed. Uh, as our first species. We're going to lump those together because for control purposes uh, there's really no different recommendations and the only time you can really 100% sure tell them apart is when the seed head is present and obviously you want to establish control before seed is established. So they're both tall plants with few branches. The leaves are typically egg-shaped. Um, they have a sort of a green to red appearance on the stem and it can vary up and down the plant on collar. Um, the smooth is less hairy than the red root is the real take home message between the slightly hairy and the roughly hairy. Unless you have them side by side it's really hard to tell them apart. Um, but later in the year when uh, they've established their seed heads the smooth has numerous branches. It's long, thick, and slightly prickly. And the red root has few branches and tend to be more short and stout and a more prickly appearance. So here you can see the pubescence on the upper part of the stem and going up the back side of the leaf. Um, here's the general leaf shape, kind of that nice uh, egg to oval shape, a couple different examples. Smooth pigweed, you have your numerous branches compared to your red root. Um, pretty nice looking, evenly distributed uh, seed head right there. And then here's your red root, which has typically fewer branches than smooth, uh, prickly appearance, and it's more short and stout. So those are both really good pictures. You can really tell them apart. Your pow amaranth, um, again, very similar to the red root and the smooth. Uh, the eggs or the sh sh leaves can have that egg shape or the oval shape, but typically they're a little more of a diamond shape and a little more pointed than the leaves. Um, so again, if they're side by side, easier to tell apart. Uh, but if you're just in a field of pal, it sometimes can be a little harder to pick out. It also has less hair than the other two species uh, most of the time. But you know, like I said, if they're not all right next to each other, it can be sort of sort of hard to determine. Slightly less, more, you know, hairy based on you know three plants that are very similar. Uh, again, the seed head uh, really tells it apart. Branches a few. Usually very long, thick, and prickly. Uh, the one on the right, the picture on the right, is more typical of that thick stoutness uh, with a nice, nice length to it. But, you know, there's always variation among species. So, again, it can be kind of hard to tell them apart. Uh, so, water hemp, this is our first one with no hair. Water hemp's the easiest uh, out of all the ones in this PowerPoint to pick apart from the other ones. Um, has a lot of variation in size and height. Uh, but the leaves have, are long and they're narrow and they're waxy and they obviously don't have any hair uh, and they look a lot different than the other species. You get uh, typically a little more color variation. You get more pinks and light greens and dark greens and it's kind of all over the place. Uh, but it's got that glossy appearance and the, the hairlessness. And the seed head, they have male and female uh, inflorescence. Uh, but they're usually long, slender, and smooth for the male. So your water hemp, nice picture of the, the leaves, uh, no hair, that glossy, waxy appearance, and a little longer, more long and uh, narrow compared to the pigweed species we looked at earlier. And then here's a nice side one where you can see the stem. Again, no hair, uh, some grooving in the stem, and you get a lot of color variation with the pinks and the reds and the greens. And this is a, a male seed head, um, long, slender, and smooth, and obviously looks a lot different than the pigweed species we looked at earlier. Last but not least is Palmer amaranth. Uh, this is the one that's you know getting a little more attention now. Obviously, a very devastating weed in the south, uh, and it's working its way north. Yet to be determined how big of a problem it'll actually be for us. Uh, extremely vigorous, really likes to grow. It's a tall plant. Uh, you know, it usually gets above the canopy later in the year, and you'll see a big flush of it. You usually don't just see one or two. Uh, leaves are more diamond shaped, and they have a long leaf stalk. 
uh, stems and leaves vary from the green to the pink, and it's hairless and smooth, and the seed head tends to be very long and thick and extremely prickly, so it's a lot more robust and stands out a little bit more than the other species. Um, a great way to tell water hemp and palmer apart is petiole length, so that's the part of the stem that goes from the main stem to the leaf. Uh, so the water hemp on the left, if you fold that over, it's about half the length of the leaf. The palmer on the other hand, when you fold it over, it's actually longer or as long as the leaf. So there's your uh, ovate to diamond leaves. So, you know, there's no hair present. It has that more of a, a pal shape to it where it's a little more diamond, a little more pointy, but there's no hair, so you shouldn't be able to mistake it with the water hemp or the pal. Um, hairless and smooth stem, not quite as close, but you can see a little bit of the color variation, a little bit of pinks and reds, and uh, got a little bit of that smooth, shiny appearance because no hair is present. Here's your male and your female flowering structures. Uh, the male's soft uh, and sheds pollen, and the female's a little bit prickly and contains seed. And then the length, when it's, when it's standing straight up, you get a lot of variation here, but it's always a lot longer than the rest. So uh, 18 to 24 is what most books say, but we've seen them measured you know, over 30 inches in length. Uh, things to look out for with Palmer Amaranth. The rapid growth, aggressive competition, extremely prol prolific seed production, and it germinates throughout the season. So typically it starts uh, a little bit later in the growing season, uh, so that mid to late summer. So if you think you're doing all right and all of a sudden you have a, a late flush of pigweed and you went from having none to just a huge patch, that's when you want to have concern and you, you know you might be looking out for Palmer. Um, and you want to make sure, you know, if, if, if you're scouting, which you sh obviously should be, uh, you know, when a large flush appears, you want to treat it very quickly because uh, once it gets, you know, over that two to four inch range, it becomes very hard to uh, treat with chemicals and you're, uh, you know, you have to look at other alternative methods of control. But grow up two inches per day, heights greater than seven feet, um, just a really tough weed. So uh, just one last picture where you can sort of see all the seed heads or inflorescence all next to each other. So your smooth, your red root, your pow, and your palmer, and then the, both the male and the female of the water hemp. Um, so the, the male and the female palmer look fairly similar, so we didn't have to separate those out, but your water hemp male and female have a little bit of variation. But, you know, obviously, like, you always want to establish control. You don't want to let the weed go to seed. But if it does, you'll at least be able to make a correct ID. Uh, just a few resources. Uh, the top is our OSU Weed Science Extension website. Uh, you probably came from that website to view this, but if not, feel free to check it out. Uh, the second one is a PDF fact sheet that you can either print off or download to your tablet. Uh, it's basically the extremely or condensed version of this PowerPoint. Uh, the one after that is Purdue Ag. Uh, they've got a couple good fact sheets and a lot of good resources. Uh, the next two are PDFs that can also be downloaded uh, that are really good references for pigweed and they have a few more species than we talked about today. And the last two are Georgia and Arkansas. They uh, have had uh, Palmer and various other pigweed species in the south. Uh, been a little bit more problem, a little bit more of a problematic weed uh, and they have a lot of really good resources available. Last but not least, uh, Thanks to Ohio State University Extension and the United Soybean Board. Um, that's where our funding comes from, so we can do this great research. And uh, really appreciate that. Uh, if anyone has any questions, my contact information is on the website and on the pigweed identification fact sheet. Um, and, you know, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email if you have any questions. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and hope you have a great day.